Hi, I'm Dr Botox and you're listening to my podcast Diary of a Botox Bitch coming to you live from downtown Beverly Hills. Super interesting stuff going on today in Los Angeles. So first of all... Are you ready for your host? Here she goes. Welcome to Diary of a Botox Bitch podcast. Oh man, I can't get enough of your voice. Keep on talking. A couple of months we had the WGA strike, the Writers Guild of America strike. Then... Once that was in the mid throws, we had the SAG AFTRA strike as well on top of that. So the picket lines for WGA, all summer long picket lines for SAG. It's been a really like it's been a pretty awful summer. So a lot of people, I'm always comedy is my number one thing. But a lot of people then jumped into comedy because creative people, we need an outlet. It's like in the morning time, I just I don't want anyone to come near me in the mornings. I'm creative. I'm thinking I'm pondering. Sometimes I'm sitting in a cafe writing. Sometimes I'm just contemplating life. I don't know, like just creatives were weird and the older I get the more creative I am and the more my creativity and that side of the brain needs to be fed so the whole joke here is all summer long everyone was on the picket lines a lot of my friends it was I mean it was it was tough it was people were broke and it was it was a it was a rough ride but the joke is since Dr Botox at the comedy scene in LA I guess it's probably January this year that I really started going super hard here so the joke is everyone was broke on the picket lines, but I would rock up and be like, put on your SPF or, you know, I'd be on shows with people and everyone was getting sheet masks or, you know, samples of hyaluronic and face rollers. And, and there isn't there isn't a comic or a security person or wonderful wait staff who doesn't have makeup sponge, a face roller for me, a sheet mask. Like literally everyone's like, yeah, Botox has got us. So today, though, was super fun because I had a commercial this morning, which was great. And then last night, as you can probably tell from my from my social media, I was at the Laugh Factory. I turned around and suddenly I'm standing beside Dave Chappelle. I was I wasn't downstairs. I was in the green room up the top, which is kind of mostly comics only. Well, it is comics only. But so I turned around and Dave Chappelle was there. I was like shut at the front door. And then we were kind of out late. And then I had an early call time this morning and I was on set then this afternoon. I got a message while I was at the Laugh Factory. Just someone asked me, could I jump on and play the role of a mom? on a game show kind of sketch thing. I can't say much more about it, but it was so interesting to be back on set. And for me, it was a really good run out today because things have been shut down for six months. And I got to tell you, it was a much bigger set than I thought it was going to be. And it was a big American set, big, big crew, super, super, super set up, like huge soundstage. It was badass. And I got to say it and I said before, it was like it was like RT, which is like the network at home, but it was like 10 times the size. It was huge. Super well looked after, super just fab. And it was a good run out for me because this morning I had a commercial to do. So here's the thing. I can put lines into my head and I can be off book and I can be off book quite quickly, but not for two different things. So this was an interesting thing. Just This is just for other actors out there. This was an interesting thing. And, and obviously my stand up set, you know, whether I'm doing five minutes or 20 minutes or whatever, you know, you don't just make it up as you go along. You have it's it's pretty much a similar subject throughout. Does that make sense? So you'll have your punchlines and your you know your premise, and it's not like you get up there and you're just making it up. It's it's almost like a monologue in some ways, but you've got to make it sound like it's coming for the first time. But that's so you know I'm used to learning stuff, and the first time you run a set as well, you're always it's probably the most exciting because obviously the stakes are higher because you don't necessarily know it or whatever, and you're not going to run it on a big stage the first time. It might just be an open mic, or you've done it on an open mic and then you're running it on maybe a B club stage, you know, in the Valley, you know, or something like that, you know, um, there's a club in Burbank. So it's not like, it's not like the big clubs. It's not like the comedy store or the Laugh Factory or the Improv. And then there's other, there's other clubs in the Valley as well. Like the Comedy Chateau is a great, I mean, it's really up there with the best of the best. So anyway, long story short, I was on set today. It was fabulous. It was great. But this morning I had to do a commercial. So I had to learn the lines for that. And I couldn't put the other lines in for the afternoon until I had done that. I know, weird. I have like, my brain is in compartments. And also as well, I don't talk about this a lot, but I, I'm really dyslexic. Now, it doesn't, I, it doesn't really affect me on a day-to-day basis because whatever way I've trained my brain, obviously I have three degrees, three masters. I've worked around it. But when I'm tired or when I have to learn lines like that really, really quickly. So this morning was squared away. I didn't even get to stay for lunch in the first set because it was more West Hollywood, West L.A., But I had to go, we had to travel quite far, uh, not far away, but it was a good, it was a good, like it was, it's half an hour drive on a Sunday. You know, if you get to like three o'clock on a Monday, it's an hour and a half. So we had to get away really fast off this morning's set and then get on set, which was fine, actually, because we got there in plenty of time. And also they were just breaking for lunch. So they were like, we're so sorry. I was like, oh, I don't care. Like, I'm here. We're good. Don't panic at all. 
and we were all set by eight o'clock. So it wasn't like a terribly long day for the second half. But it was just interesting. The fact that I just interested. It was just interesting the way my brain works. I had to get this morning squared away. And then because I had to learn the lines pretty quickly and fast, I find myself like and I do this sometimes, I'll draw little pictures or I know it sounds dumb, but again, it's just tricks of the trade for just today was a fast turnaround. There was a lot going on today. And then on the way home, one of my friends runs a show and I popped in just to give him a hug. And he was so sweet. He was like, do you want to jump up? And I was like, oh, my God, I really do. But I also have an early call time tomorrow. And then I have a massive show on Friday. So t- this week is a busy week and then it just eases up a little bit. And if I'd stayed tonight to jump up, I would have been 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning by the time I got home. So I came home instead and a little chill out time and I guess, you know, just relaxed a bit. But here's the deal. I wanted to talk about that for a minute. It was just interesting to see how my brain works today under pressure, but also I just pivot and whatever. Here's the thing. If you're dyslexic or, you know, you've a little bit on the spectrum or ADHD or anything like the blessings are so vast this is going to be an unpopular thing to say, but I feel like people who are dyslexic, people who are on the spectrum, people who have ADHD, ADD, society makes it out to be a bad thing. I don't know how the fuck anything gets done without people who are dyslexic, ADD, ADHD on the spectrum, because we're all the superpowers, if that makes sense. Like there's no great creative, there's no great person in the world who's done amazing things. Look, you have the people who are like dyslexic, you know, ADD, ADHD, a little bit on the spectrum. All these people are the big creatives. Then you have the plod along pollies who, by the way, have a probably a much easier life. The two up, two down, the two cars, the two story, the two kids. It's all very plod along poly. And it's great. And as my grandmother always said, to have a simple life or to be, you know, just not to have big expectations. It's a much easier life for sure, of course. But I have to say, if any of the kids are out there listening or anyone's listening and dyslexia or and I don't even hide it anymore. I get to the airport and I'm like, ugh, I can't even check it online myself. I'm dyslexic now. I probably could. But again, I'm like, you know what? I took the flack for this for years. So I'm just going to be like, help, I need help. I can't do this. And, and again, definitely from a creative point of view, if you're a little bit on the spectrum, a little bit of a lot of my comic friends are ADHD, like completely and utterly. One of my friends was like, I think you're on the spectrum. I'm like, I fucking hope so. I would hope so a little bit. There's nothing wrong. This is the superpowers. And it's funny because kids in school are, people are, it's just so weird. From someone who's had successful businesses and goes after everything she fucking wants, believe me, I couldn't have done any of this if I wasn't, like I didn't read till I was nine. I couldn't read. Like I literally couldn't read. And then one summer I discovered the famous five and the secret seven. Do you remember Enid Blyton? And I remember sitting and just reading all the books because suddenly I had something to read for. It was interesting to me. It was worth my while. So I taught myself to read. I was like nine or ten. I couldn't read. Like I literally couldn't read. And then in terms of the way my mind is organized, it's very compartmentalized in many ways. And then above all of that, it's very creative and again if I wasn't a little bit I mean I don't think I'm diagnosed on the spectrum officially but I'm definitely like a little bit like you know whatever and again walk in my glory I wouldn't change it for I wouldn't change my brain for the world certainly that I might have a touch of ADHD (laughs) because I look at my podcast and I'm like chatting about one thing and then I'm on to the next which makes complete sense to me because my brain goes like at 110 miles an hour and so again if you don't have a little touch of ADHD ADD a little bit on the spectrum a little dyslexia or something like, great, you're going to have a lovely plod along life. But t- let, let me tell you, all the creatives, the big, the big ballers, every single person, it's a superpower. So if you're a little dyslexic, a little ADHD, a little ADD, anything, anything remotely on the spectrum, it's your fucking superpower. For so long, we're told, oh, that's a bad thing. Shut the fuck up. Like, honestly, I wouldn't do I wouldn't get through any of the mountains of work that I get through if I wasn't so focused and so hyper, like obsessively focused about things. It's all superpowers. And then sometimes as well, creatives like, for example, like Kanye West, I, I mean, OK, he's got some stuff on his number of sequelae. But again, he's like super creative. He's done amazing stuff. He's built amazing brands. And again, he's, I'm sure, a little bit on the spectrum as well. And the creatives always are. And especially I see with comics as well, you know, they it's just it's funny. I just this whole thing of making it a negative thing if people are a little ADHD, a little ADD, a little on the spectrum, a little dyslexic. I know I'm just so like, honestly, I go to the airport. I'm like, you want to see me? I'm like, I can't check it online. I'm dyslexic. I just I mean, I can't, but I just couldn't be bothered. There'll always be someone going, oh, because for years we had to put up with all the, oh, you're dyslexic. So I'm like, oh, I can't check it online. So there'll always be some Mary will come along and help me. I go, thanks very much. That's great. Then I get to the next thing and then there's I'll be like, oh, 
I can't I can't stay in the line here I have anxiety I need to go in the quick path you want to see me in the airport and like I literally you've never been so seen someone so vocal oh I've this I've that like oh I've a bunion on my foot I can't stand in line like I just I have no that's why I, honestly everyone's like would you get married and I'm like if he had a G650 private jet extended range obviously we're hatching a plan at the moment because we might have Dr Botox for president in which case I've just had confirmation that the Irish presidential jet is going to get an upgrade for 45 million so listen your girl is going to have a private jet by the end of 2024, early 2025, whatever way we do it, be it President of Ireland or we'll marry me off to somebody, whatever. But again, I hate flying commercial, even flying business class. It's grand when you get on the plane, but by the time you get on the plane, you're all stinky and everything's disgusting. I will say as soon as you get on an Aer Lingus flight in LAX, though, you do feel like you're at home and the Aer Lingus crew are the best by a long shot. Like they're just so much fun. And I always love when I'm getting a flight from Dublin to LAX and literally they, they're so fun. Like they always, I'm getting off, they're like putting a bottle of champagne in my bag and everything. They're just the crack. I think they had crew nights watching The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Or, sorry. Oh, beep, 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 cut that out. The Real Housewives of Ireland. I'm tired today. I've done, I've done a lot. So, yeah. So again, superpowers. And clearly I am a little ADHD or ADD or something because you'll see me on one topic and then I jump to the next. And again, do I care? Like, no, keep up, keep up. You know, it's funny. I just, um, yeah, it's a superpower. Like if you're a little dyslexic or a little, because you have other, and also as well, people who are dyslexic or who have ADHD or any little sequelae, just even something slightly off the nose, you'll find that you're, like I see patterns. This is, you'll laugh at this, but like it's so obvious to me certain things are just so obvious. I can read somebody in about two seconds. There's just, I can just decode people so quickly. You know, it's just funny. It's just, you got to have the superpower. So if you've got kids, just hope to God they've a little dyslexia, a little a little ADHD, a little ADD, like a, just a little bit on the spectrum because otherwise, like that's your superpower. That's your big leverage, you know, just having that mind that's just a little bit, that brain that's just a little bit off the nose, that's just a little bit to the left because that's where you really can gear up and grind out and really create such magic with whatever, like look at Kanye West with the brands he created. Look at... I mean, a lot of actors in comedy, like comics as well, are very much to half my friends are. It's so funny. This is the funniest thing ever. And it's it's I'm the I'm bad for it as well. So we go to shows and we always sit in the back and you can watch anyone you want in this town. So like, for example, like I said, you know, you're watching the greats every night of the week. But there's often in clubs, there's two or three rooms. So you can jump in and out the back of the rooms, whatever. And I honestly, I can't tell you the last time I sat through an hour long show. I wouldn't have. I just couldn't. I don't have. Maybe it's just we get ADHD with comedy like we like and also you see some people in the same set or whatever. So we just move around a lot or whatever. And I look at my whatever I am on the spectrum, my friends in your comics are like much worse. They're like literally I'm like I thought I was bad with the short span of attention because I just need to be constantly. That's why it's what we're talking about running for president. It's a seven year gig like I'd have. I'd have whatever needed to be done done about eight months. Do you know what I mean? I just, I couldn't be doing one thing for seven years. It would be weird or to be in one spot for seven years. But anyway, yeah. So basically the whole point of this podcast is, or this episode is literally, if you're dyslexic, if you're a little bit dyspraxic, if you have a little ADHD, a little ADD, if you're a little bit on the spectrum, even if you've like a little, like you've, you're, you know, There's certain sequelae or I have friends who like as well who are just they have a touch of autism. And again, just the level of once you get in your zone, like or once you get in your lane for whatever it is you're meant to do, it's just a joy because you can just change gear and grind it out. The plod along pollies are always going to be plodding along in the slow lane and they have an easy life. And sure, you know, grand, leave them off. But those of you who are a little, like I said, a little dyslexic, a little lady HD, a lady D, a little on the spectrum, just find your thing and then hit the the play button and just watch yourself just soar. It's your superpower. It's your superpower. It's your superpower. I honestly, I can't even, I can't even tell you. And then it's funny because certainly there are times when I think as well, like, for example, I can think of certain times in my life where I've done things or like, for example, I sailed across the Atlantic. So I must have been about 21 years of age and I sailed across the Atlantic from Fort Lauderdale in Florida to Portsmouth in the UK. It was about three weeks and two days at sea. Nearly lost my motherfucking medulla because I was so bored. In many ways, I wasn't. What we did was there was a crew of six. It was a 120 foot schooner. And basically 
I had been working on a motor yacht, motor yacht Octopussy, which is this amazing American motor yacht that was parked in Antibes in the International Yacht Club Antibes. So I had worked on that and then I went back with the crew to America and then there was another delivery of a boat back to England. So rather than fly back, I said, oh, do you know what, I'll just sail back because, of course, you know, like I said, again, it's superpowers. It's like it's always wanting to do what's a little bit off or the sense of adventure or I don't know, whatever. So anyway, we set sail and it was like three and a half weeks at sea. And it's so weird because, again, your superpowers are your best asset, but then at times they're your worst asset, if that makes sense, because like I just didn't. It was boring. Being at sea was fine. There was dolphins. There was days that there was such bad storms. You know, like I think about it, there was such bad storms one day. We all had to be like tied onto the boat and stuff. Like I th- I was younger. I don't know if I'd have the, the guts to do stuff like that now. But anyway, at the time I'm looking back going, it's no wonder I didn't fall off the side of the boat. And I don't know, like whatever. But again, these are the the moments of just exceptional decisions to do exceptional things to, you know. And again, I feel like if I just was a plot along Polly, I would never do those things. I would never make those choices. I would never have the capacity to decode stuff and see where the opportunities are and to groove and pivot. And anyway, that's just my thoughts. So if you're dyslexic, ADHD, ADD, any of these, they're all superpowers. They're such fucking superpowers. You have no idea, like literally superpowers. And you just got to find what your thing is, because listen, lots of people who are just plod along polys, they can just do whatever. It doesn't really nothing excites them anyway, so they can just plod along. Whereas if you're like me, you've got to do something that you're passionate about. Like, I don't even want to go to bed tonight because I'm just I've had such a good day and it's just annoying that we have to sleep as humans because I just want to keep grinding through my work list of my things because I love what I do. And if you like what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And again, it's very diverse because I, you know, I was on set today. I was doing a commercial. That's fun. Then I got to do it ended up being a sitcom. It's a it's a half hour show. And there was a set script, but also there was moments where we were able to improv stuff and workshop stuff. And then on the way home, I stopped in to my friend at a show and I really wanted to go up, but I was like, I knew if I didn't get home and get rested, I'd be in no good shape for the rest of the week. So it's diverse. And then obviously I have my skincare. And again, I couldn't do this if I didn't have a mind that was able to work five different things at the one time, if that makes sense. So if I didn't and then when I'm tired as well, like definitely when I'm tired, I get it's harder or like today I had to learn two sets of lines for just two different jobs. It's the way it's been because we've been playing catch up because we have the WGA and the SAG after strike. And then other parts can be very fluid, if that makes sense. That's really it's just I'm just interested today. I'm just I'm just thinking and reflecting on the day and how I managed my day to day, both in terms of timekeeping and organisation and stuff. And then I'm blessed as well, because when I got to the second set, I hadn't eaten lunch because I had to get a hard out and get on the road to the we had to beat the traffic and stuff. And even though there was a driver and stuff, I I still had to we still had to leave. And I, I probably should have grabbed snacks in the car, but I didn't. And that was kind of my bad. But then when I got to set, there was a delay in the afternoon shooting and then we broke for lunch anyway. So it all worked out. But it's just and again, I should know that I have to have snacks with me and I could have grabbed snacks off craft services as well. So that was kind of dumb of me. But it's just interesting on a day like today, I realised the challenges could be a challenge, but actually I make them my superpower. And I'm just saying to people who literally you've got dyslexia, don't hide it. Just be like, I say it all the time. I go to the airport literally and I'm like, oh, I can't check in at the self check. And I said, I'm dyslexic. I go to the doctor's office and they always want forms filled out. I don't have I don't have two and a half minutes brain capacity to fill out a form on an iPad. I just I wouldn't have the competition. I just wouldn't have the capacity. So I'd be like, listen, I'm dyslexic. I don't have my dyslexia glasses. I don't even have dyslexia glasses. But anyway, the point is, use your superpower to navigate the world and don't be afraid to walk in your glory and tell everyone who you are. Just be authentic. And again, I'm sure I'm my friends say to me, they're like, you're definitely a little ADHD because everyone here in L.A. is ADHD or ADD or whatever. I'm like, I probably am. And again, it's just still a superpower. It's a superpower. Anything that's a little bit off the nose, anything that's quirky about you. We're so, so society is so, especially growing up in Ireland as well. I feel like they're, they're a lot better now, but it's so like, honestly, the geniuses are all a little bit off the nose. The people who really high achieve in life, all a little bit off the nose. The creatives, all a little bit off the nose. So you don't want to be a plot along poly. So if you have put a comment here, if you have ADHD, ADD, a little dyslexia, a little dyspraxia, a little on the spectrum, a lot on the spectrum, anything, just put it below because you're like, you have to realise that you've got to walk in your glory and that you have superpowers, the best superpowers ever. And then other times as well, it can go against you. I remember I worked. (laughs) It's just so funny. I was just thinking about working on boats because 
I sail across the Atlantic, like I said, and again, obsessively trying to get on the boat so I could sail across the Atlantic. And then we used to do four hours on watch and then eight hours off. So you would sleep for eight hours, which was fine. But if you were doing like 12 a.m. to 4 a.m., it wasn't the worst because you could just stay up and do on watch. But if you were getting up at 4 a.m., I don't that just doesn't do well with me. It's not my circadian rhythm. So we missed the Azores and we had to survive on Snickers for the whole last week because we didn't get to pick up more food and everyone was pissed with me, like whatever. So yeah, we do have (laughs) superpowers, but also sometimes not so superpowers. But then also another time I remember I worked on this boat called Le Trois Frères in Antibes the first summer after I finished school and my job was super easy. I had to just drive the Ferrari and go and get the ex-wife and the kid and then they'd go out for the day and we'd all swim off the back of the boat. It was really good. But the funniest thing happened, one of the days they were doing a charter on a smaller boat so they sent me to be the stewardess on board with the captain and I was like, chagrined. And they were all getting out of the boat. It was the funniest thing ever. Which again is like when sometimes you mess up and I would have been embarrassed, but now I just laugh. But I had to do a stewardess and then they were all getting off the back of the boat and they were getting on a tender. And then I was trying to tie the tender and I don't know how this happened, but I ended up falling into the water in front of all the guests. And I remember, and it was just because, I don't know what it was. It was definitely something just didn't connect in my brain or whatever for that split second. And I remember being mortified and I was saturated. Luckily I had to change of uniform, so it was fine. And I didn't know why at the time, but it was, it kind of bothered me. I was like, oh my God. And now I would just be like, whatever. So maybe that's just something as well as you get older, you get more comfortable in your skin. I don't know, who knows. But I was just commenting on today. I was on a big set, LA, it's all over my TikTok and social media, whatever. It's just fun to see. And again, it was just interesting to me for me to watch my brain now as I'm older compared to and how I managed the day and how I managed having to learn two different scripts with very short turnaround. And also I had to clear the decks on my commercial this morning and have my brain almost like the cache cleared before I could put them the lines for the afternoon in, if that makes sense. And it's just interesting to see because whatever you're struggling with, if you're 12, 13, 16, 18, 22, whatever tasks you're struggling with or whatever, you'll find as you get older, those very things become your absolute superpower. So I guess that's what the message is today in a 20 minute podcast in the most roundabout way, because I probably do have ADHD. But my point is the things that you struggle with when you're like 16, 13, 12, 18, 21, 22, The things that are frustrated, whatever happens as you get a little bit older, your brain compensates and then you get into this grind where they're your absolute superpowers. So I guess the moral of the story is today is if you are struggling with ADHD, ADD, Asperger's, any of these things, they're all superpowers. They're mega superpowers. So just remember to be chill, go easy to yourself, be kind to yourself and just know that as you get a little bit older, your brain will just kind of pivot around these things and then it'll flip to the other way where they're your absolute superpowers. So, yes. It is good to be like, this is the thing. I think most people who are very driven or high achievers definitely have a touch of something for sure. And it's definitely slightly off the nose and it's definitely growing up viewed as a bad thing. But definitely if you just decide now that it's a really good thing. So if you're 13 or you're 19 or you're 22 or 25, just be like, oh, I have a superpower. So just find what you like to do. Get in your groove and just know when you hit the play button, you are going to pass everybody out. So it's just your superpowers. So I just wanted to talk about superpowers today because today was funny. It was quite apparent to me that I had a couple of superpowers going today. And again, I wouldn't have been able to manage a day like today. A younger me wouldn't have been able to navigate it so well, whereas I navigated it and did had a great day. And and I also knew as well to rest as well. Like I was I stopped into my friend's show and he was like, hey, do you want to jump up? And I was like, you know what, I would love to, but I would have had to jump in between two shows and I would have I would have had to wait around an hour. And I just also knew as well that I needed to get home and get rest and stuff. So that's the other thing as well to bear in mind. I don't know. I'm just saying the whole negative connotations about dyslexia, dyspraxia, ADHD, ADD, like any of these, anyone on the spectrum, it's like your actual superpower. So just find your niche that you want because you know the way your brain works. Hit the play button and watch yourself walk in your glory and soar. Honestly, like really, I just I can't say it enough. Just remember these things that were seen as a negative thing and may have connotations. Believe me, any of the brilliant people who've done amazing things in the world, they're all the same as us. Like they've all like a little something on the spectrum, a little dyslexic. They're a little like it's all just superpowers. It just means your brain's wired different, which is brilliant because who wants a normal like do you want a normal wiring or do you want like a 10x Tesla wiring? Do you know what I mean? Like you just need to be like, it's a good thing. So if you have any of those things, put a comment below. 
Let me know what you struggle with. And I can tell you as soon as I just you get to a certain age where it just flips the other way and then suddenly it's just it's not something that gets in your way. And like I said, sometimes it definitely does a little bit, but I don't even bother trying and work through it. I just go, oh, I can't check in online. I don't know how to do it. I just it's something that is hard for me. It's like the Facebook and the, you know, when it says match the things to prove you're a robot, the cap chat or whatever. Like I can never do that. So sure, it doesn't matter. I just press audio and do that, do it that way. So just if anyone's struggling there with anything and they just to let you know it's your superpower. So walk in your glory and don't hide it as well. Just get to the airport. Be like me. I'm like, oh, I can't check it online. I'm dyslexic. Oh, I can't. I, like I stand in the line. I was like, I can't stand in the line. I'm typically a fly business class, but sometimes you end up not. And I'm like, I can't stand in the line. And they're like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, oh, I'll just make up something else because I just I don't have the patience. I literally can't stand in a line. I can't stand in the line for 20 minutes. I don't have the patience for that or the capacity to be in one place. <laughs> it's desperate. So just remember any of those things slightly on the spectrum, anything at all. Even very on the spectrum, like you're still super power, super power, super power, but you just have to find your niche and then hit the play button. And as you get older, it'll flip the other way in your favor, if that makes sense. It was just it was just interesting today to see how I managed everything. I did, I had a lot on today and it was but I did have to learn my lines for this morning and then shoot that, clear the cache and then I had to learn other lines. And then I end up drawing pictures because I have real photographic memory. Everyone knows what they're you know how your workaround is. So just find out what your workaround is and then just do things that way. So you don't have to con form to the way other people do things. It's your life. You can do whatever you want. You can just walk in your own glory, walk to the beat of your own drum. You don't have to do things the way everyone does it. So today, like my script, obviously it's a printed out script, but I do things like I have dashes and then I underline the operative words, obviously. And so first of all, you get a script, you highlight it, then you underline the operative words. And then there's a, there's certain five words that go together. So I'll put five lines, and five dots underneath, and then I'll draw little pictures. It's just weird. I don't know. Anyway, but the point is you can navigate any of these things and don't make any apologies, just do what you need to do is kind of the main gist of it. So that's it for me. Diary of a Botox Bitch podcast. Next episode, we are going to talk about all things reality TV and bring it back. We've had some soulful episodes. We've talked about a little bit of politics last episode. Today, we're talking about, I suppose, dyslexia and just superpowers that people have, whatever. Like, look at Kanye West as well, like completely beyond creative and I know he's had a bit of a slump I just think you know but again he'll watch him he'll come back full circle just watch it just watch it trust me and even if he has bipolar disorder which I don't know if even he has but he may have it but I sometimes feel it might be Kardashian disorder because they chew up and spit out all the men that come into their lives even their own brother like whatever but I do feel like he would have been better off if he hadn't you know got involved with the Kardashians but he's super 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 he just I, I'd i say he didn't sleep for a couple of years he just was grinding at the stuff now you should sleep and even tonight like I would have loved to gone up and done comedy but yeah this is about superpowers so you're listening to Diary of a Botox Bitch I'm Dr. Botox Dr. Danielle Mark Collins and it's been great talking to you I know it's exactly what you've been waiting for so let's do this welcome to the segment we call Botox let's talk all things Botox filler and skincare 